Age of Empires, the grandfather of strategy gaming and a franchise that is somehow still going from strength to strength. My introduction to gaming was playing on the original AoE 1 on my dad's old PC, a feeling that could never be recreated, a simple time where all I had to do was live in that moment. But since that massive success, Age of Empires has had its copies, its clones, some good, some terrible and some even great. But without further ado, let's get into three Age of Empires clones you've probably never heard of. Zero AD, one of the more well-known games that I'm going to be talking about today and perhaps one of the most successful. You see, there was a period of time between the release of AoE 3 in 2005 and the Soft franchise reboot with the definitive editions in the late 2010s. This was a period where nothing really happened in the franchise, an abyss where Age of Empires once ruled and whilst still being on top, it's almost being dragged along by the outdated HD edition and the competitive community. But because of this, the guys at Wildfire Games saw an opening, a gap in the market for something similar to what Ensemble Studios had made but with two big differences that made their take on the RTS genre stand out. It had to be open source and it had to be free. And so that's what they did. Zero AD combines the best bits of Age of Empires with more of a focus on historical accuracy and customization, being able to mod the game to your heart's content and change pretty much everything about the playstyle that we all know and love. As I mentioned, the game has a bit more focus on historical accuracy. You see, in a lot of RTS games you have your villagers and then your soldiers, they're very much separate, yet Zero AD tends to blur the line somewhat between these two. Back in the ancient world, professional armies were very rare. Okay, you had your Spartans and the Romans just to name a couple, but most civilizations didn't have men whose only job was to fight and train, contrary to popular belief. You see, the majority of civilizations didn't have soldiers. They had potters, farmers, smiths, all who were called upon in terms of war. And to simulate this in the game, Zero AD lets you recruit villagers, then also has a focus on civilian soldiers, troops that can be recruited to fight but also just work as labourers, yet they will don their armour and ride to war when the time comes. It's a really nice touch as it also kind of helps and adds a completely new dynamic that other RTS titles just don't really look into all that much. You see, going to war is much more costly in Zero AD, as you're taking your livelihood with you. You're sending your miners, your lumberjacks and farmers into the fight, meaning a loss could be even more devastating than before, not only for your army but your economy in general. Overall, I think the game does something fantastic, filling in that gap and the need for a free-to-play Age of Empires type game but with the possibilities to expand on something completely new, with the options of open source. I have to be honest though, and some time into recording the footage for this video, I did come across a lot of game-breaking bugs. There was things like lighting glitches, which sometimes you can expect, but all of a sudden just tooltips stopped showing up. When I wanted to upgrade my city to the next level in the next period, the tooltip to show me what I needed just disappeared all of a sudden. And then out of nowhere, the game just started to chug, and I mean really chug, to the point where I had to exit the game. And this is on a Ryzen 9 and an RTX 3090, so I have a feeling it wasn't the hardware. So just keep that in mind, but this is definitely a game that is worth looking at if you love the RTS genre. I mean, at the end of the day, it's free. You want to hear something incredible? Do you want to hear the reason I'm really making this video? And that's because of the game Citadels. <sighs> I don't even know why I'm putting myself through this again. A while back I was curious as most people are. I thought to myself, what is the worst rated medieval game on Steam? And well, Citadels is what came up. And let me preface this, do not buy this game. It will not get better. The devs have, <laughs> they ditched it a while ago now and you're about to see why. Citadels is what can be described as the most simplistic Age of Empires game of all time. It's a stripped down version taking everything that people loved about AoE and, well, chucking it in the bin. It boils down to this. 
spam the lowest tier unit possible until victory. Fantastic. There's little to no strategy throughout the game, but that's not to say the game as a whole is worthless. Looking at it from an objective and critical angle, there is some sort of direction and differences in this game to other RTSs. For example, it has a lot more emphasis on exploration of resources, not being told where to find certain things like stone or ores unless you scout them out first. Additionally, the military has the same end goal as Zero AD, it just has a little bit of a different approach. The end goal, of course, having the focus on balancing between the economy and troops. You can only get footmen, archers and cavalry by retraining already current villages, giving players that crossroad deciding between do we want more gatherers or more defences. Unfortunately, that's where the good and unique things really end. The game looks disgusting. Graphically, it's one of the worst games I've ever laid my eyes on and I have played Ride to Hell Retribution. That really said something when this looks worse than the original 1997 Age of Empires. This game came out in 2013. Even 8 years after release there were some stupid bugs like clicking on villagers to do jobs as you would expect left click on the villager, right click on the job you want them to do. Simple. Anyone can do that, it's one of the easiest things to code into a game, right? It works about 40% of the time. Normally I have to resort to spamming the right click with no actual feedback on whether or not the orders are going through to the stupid AI and uh, yeah, we should probably talk about that. The AI is more stupid than Donald Trump on Universally Challenged. It is a miracle if it actually follows your orders at all. And then when it does, it's even more of a success if it manages to pathfind the way to said objective that you chose for it. Furthermore, when a soldier goes into battle, it won't do anything except blindly attack the one thing in front of it. I had this situation where I was trying to take out an enemy town center with a very much superior force than the enemy, but I lost massive numbers. Just because I had my troops focused on that town centre and one enemy came and sat to the side of my men and just hacked them down. As my infantry were so focused on the town centre, it didn't matter to them that friends and brothers were being decapitated to their left and right. They didn't care. Citadels is a disaster. A game that tried to cash in at around the same time of Age of Empires 2 HD edition, but no real effort was put into it. Then after all the terrible reviews came in, the devs just ditched it and ran away, never to make another game since. Or at least, not under that name. Taste of Power is a strange one. On one hand, you can see that the developers over at One Ocean are kind of trying to make an RTS that brings a new feel and light to the genre, using inspiration from Age of Empires and creating a new direction for it, but but on the other hand, it's <laughs> it's just a bit crap. The game itself isn't bad, it has some cool features like the city builder inspired villager assignment tabs. For example, instead of selecting individuals to construct or gather resources, you assign a certain amount of villagers to a job and then they'll go off and automatically do it. However, this does cause for some clunky gameplay. Also, for starts, the UI is horrible. It's one of the worst UIs I've ever seen in the game. Uh, look at the menu options. <laughs> for a PC game, the lack of customization when it comes to actually running it is shocking. Furthermore, the look and the feel of the game is horrible. Scrolling to zoom in and out may not seem like a big factor when working on a game like this, but when it's done as badly and slowly as it is in Taste of Power, you really appreciate the sensitive and direct scrolling movements of other games. Taste of Power offers three main civs or factions to players, Europe, China and the Middle East. All have their own unique units and playstyles, but not quite as unique as you would expect and hate for this kind of game. As a set rule, it goes like this, swords, good, bows bad, cannons overpowered. Taste of Power approaches troops as units rather than individuals. This means training and creating military power takes a while, but I do quite like the larger scale when it comes to multiple men in a unit of soldiers. Unfortunately, with this comes issues. With the horrible UI, it's almost impossible to micromanage with massive buttons that do nothing and tiny buttons that do everything. Troops running off in every direction as soon as they catch a whiff of the enemy and sending them flying out of any sort of formation to their death. It kind of just got to the point where I just hold all my men back, sit the cannons at the front and just bombard the enemy who would stand there and take balls to the throat. Yeah, I know what I just said. I think overall Taste of Power has potential, but it needs help. A lot of help.
Now don't get me wrong, I know there are plenty of other Age of Empires like games and clones that I haven't even slightly touched on today, so if this video gets a thousand likes I'll make sure I bring you some more to your beautiful eyes. But other than that, please subscribe if you haven't already. And until then, I will see you in the next one.